covering every county. This is your statewide newscast, Arkansas Today. A Little Rock family holding a balloon release over the weekend for their loved one who was killed in Fort Smith. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I am Aaron Nolan. And I'm Mallory Brooks. Thanks for watching Arkansas Today. Rochelle Turner talked to the family about the questions they have. I don't miss my brother. These are pictures of India Montgomery's brother, Jamiski Bibbs. Energetic, kind-hearted, always ready for the party. Like, anytime he came in the room, you just knew, you know, you was going to have a good time. Around 4 a.m. Monday morning, Fort Smith police were called to the Timberline Apartments on Kenny Avenue. A day India Montgomery and her family will never forget. I lost my best friend. That's when Montgomery says her 22-year-old brother, Jamiski Bibbs, lost his life. We got a phone call saying that, um, you know, he, was, he passed away. And we just been trying to just, you know, get a concrete story on exactly what happened. According to Fort Smith Police, officers found one man stabbed to death and another man identified as Miller Luke with injuries to his arm. Luke told police the man had entered his apartment with a gun and began attacking him. But the family says the story is not adding up. Yeah, I feel like my brother just, I feel like he's way smarter than that. And I mean, from the looks that I know, he don't own a handgun, not that I know of. You know, and it's kind of weird. He wouldn't get up for really, he wouldn't get up to do nothing at 3 o'clock in the morning but go to the store. Luke's roommate told police he was in the apartment sleeping at the time of the attack but didn't hear anything. Luke was taken to the hospital. Bibbs family says they don't know Miller Luke and their loved one, Jamiski Bibbs, had friends at the apartment complex in Fort Smith. We just want, you know, a, a legit story. Like, we actually want to know what happened to my brother and why did he do it, you know? Because we, we want, we got, we got questions and we want answers. That's all we want. The family says the past week has been traumatic, but they're not giving up until they find out what happened. We all been, you know, just trying to stay strong for each other because we know that's what he will want. And detectives say the case is still open and officers are investigating. In Bella Vista, Northwest Arkansas, a house fire killed a woman. According to the fire department, 71-year-old Rosalind Wilcox was found dead in her home. This after fighting for 30 minutes in the deadly fire. A second victim was transported by ambulance to Mercy Hospital. And Springdale police investigating a death after a woman was found with a gunshot wound lying in the road. Detectives say the woman is between 25 to 35 years old. She was found at the intersection of Don Tyson Parkway and George Anderson Road. Her body has been sent to the state medical examiner's office for an autopsy. Police say the investigation is ongoing. Anyone with information is asked to call police. Today is day number 31 of the government shutdown. Over the weekend, President Trump offered a deal to reopen the government. Democrats already rejecting it. His offer goes up for a vote in the Senate tomorrow. He's offering temporary protection for one million immigrants, refugees, and those brought here illegally as children. This in exchange for $5.7 billion for a border wall. Straightforward, fair, reasonable, and common sense with lots of compromise. It's outrageous, and he's just playing politics, and this is a bad deal. As for the State of the Union address, originally scheduled for next week, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi is trying to delay it. The president responded on Twitter, while a contract is a contract, I'll get back to you soon. This week's supplies are being gathered to help out federal workers who are waiting to get paid due to the partial government shutdown. More than 500 federal employees in Little Rock will likely miss another paycheck, which will cause more financial struggles. Mayor Frank Scott Jr. took part in a press conference at Clinton National Airport to detail their efforts. We still have federal employees that are going without pay, but still showing up to work to make certain that the residents do not experience any loss in their travel plans right now. And so, so we're very grateful for them, and we're going to do all we can to be there for them during this time. Little Rock Cares will be a two-day citywide donation drive for federal employees. The event will be held on Tuesday and Wednesday at various locations across Little Rock. California Senator Kamala Harris announced her run for president today. Senator Harris made the announcement on her Twitter page with this ad. Harris joins a crop of hopefuls, including Senator Kristen Gillibrand, Senator Elizabeth Warren, and former HUD Secretary Julian Castro. And taking a look at the day ahead, the big story of the day, services being held around the country today honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy. During his lifetime, Dr. King became the face of the civil rights movement focusing on nonviolence. He's the only non-president to have a national holiday dedicated in his honor. 
British Prime Minister Theresa May expected to outline an alternative Brexit proposal. This will be May's Plan B as Parliament tries to come to a consensus and avoid a no-deal Brexit. And former Vice President Joe Biden will be honored at the National Action Network Annual's King Day Breakfast in Washington, D.C. for his work in furthering Dr. King's legacy. All right, let's go on a trip through history. Today in 1977, President Jimmy Carter pardons the draft Dodgers. Carter grants, quote, a full, complete, and unconditional pardon to hundreds of thousands of men who evaded the Vietnam War draft. Coming up, Arkansas could not hold it together mm -hmm. against the rebel.